Welcome back, everybody. Uh, one of my fellow YouTubers, Xavier, gave me this bag of uh, ore, and supposedly it's Galena. I've never processed silver from rock before. This will be a new experience for me, and I'll take you through it step by step. Uh, we'll, we'll examine this and see what, what it looks like. Now, Galena is a comb combination of lead and silver. So we'll have to separate those two. They kind of have an affinity for each other. But first things first, we need to uh, get our equipment set up. I need to remove this snorkel. This uh, transfers the ore from the impact mill down into a bucket. And we're not going to use the impact mill today. We're going to use the flail mill. So we got to get our piping all set up so things go in the right place. This is the outlet of the jaw mill going into the flail mill. And we got to do some ad hoc fabric cobbling to uh, get things to work right. I bend this piece of metal over the end here so stuff doesn't splash out and go all over the place. And of course a roll of Gorilla Tape just to make sure that Things don't splash out and leak all over the place. Nice part about Gorilla Tape is when you put it on dry, it sticks very well. If you try and put it on something damp, it will not stick at all. So it's important you put it on dry. Okay, I checked the inside of the foil mill and it's all cleaned out. So we're just going to button it up and put some water to it and see where it leaks. And I just rebuilt this foil mill. I had to put in a new shaft, new bearings, and I, also I put in a couple of uh, baffle seals to uh, keep the water out of, and the dirt out of the forward bearing. That seems to be a problem with it. So we'll see how it works out. All right, we get our get our water going finally. All set. Good job. Now I'll come up to the uh rock crusher or the jaw crusher and give it a few cranks and get it running. A few more cranks and get it running. Okay, it's running. And we got the flail mill running and we'll just start dropping the rocks in. The jaw crusher is a, a homemade affair. It's a little bit small. So any of the larger rocks we have to break by hand where they can fit into the uh, jaw crusher. This is a fairly soft rock, so we only need one pass through the flail mill, which should give us an adequate uh, grind on our rock here. Every once in a while we get a uh, little constipation here in the uh, jaw crusher, so we have a bar that we use to uh, work things out. Hammer the rock through that is. And it's back to dropping more rocks in. Now our goal here is to get a fine enough grind that our uh, shaker table will be able to process and thereby uh, giving us the silver and the lead up in the number one high grade bin. Now this is what I meant by uh, 
breaking the larger rocks by hand. Once you get good with a sledgehammer, you can uh, just hold the rock in your hand and hit it with a sledgehammer and not break a finger. Here's the outlet of the flail mill. Uh, it deposits the, uh, the ground up material into this screen so we uh, trap all the big stuff out. If we uh, think it's good we'll run it back through the impact mill again or the flail mill again. And then the second screen is a finer screen to uh, kind of trap any of the larger stuff, the real grainy stuff. If I was running this on our large table, I would separate that into a separate bucket so we can run our coarse material and our fine grind material separately. In this case, it, it looks pretty good. We'll run it all through the, uh, the RP4 that should handle it. Now once you're done, you want to clean out the inside of the impact mill. There is material that doesn't make it through the screen. Now when you start a run on a shaker table, you want to make sure that uh, you're getting proper separation. So once you've run it for a little bit, you check and make sure that your separation is good. I hate seeing money float across the table and down into the waste drain. Yeah, just like that. Now once I was done shaking this all out, I decided to take uh, these little plastic things. These are about two cubic inches of uh, material. Uh, one of them is waste material, one of them is the high grade material. So that's 260 grams. And the same volume of high grade is 341 grams. So there should be something in there. Uh, let's get to processing this and see what kind of goodies we get. Now before we can cook this stuff up we need to dry it out so we'll go over to our convertible rotary roaster and we'll flip the rotary part forward that leaves us our burner. Get that lit up. Get our material in a pan and boil the excess water out of it. That didn't take long at all thanks to the magic of video so it looks like our material is is dry we'll shut the burner off and go get our hot work gloves you do not want to grab that cast iron pan handle without some protection on your hands I guarantee you it's hot so we'll pour this off into this uh, pot and take it inside and mix up the flux. So we're going to be using this crucible today. It's a brand new one. I don't want to get any gold contamination in our silver. So we're starting off here with 1100 grams of ore or concentrates. Now we'll mix up uh, about 2000 grams of uh, um, sodium bicarb or sodium carbonate, and then mix in uh, probably about 50 grams of silica sand. That'll be our flux. some zinc to separate out the silver from the lead. So we'll be using this uh, anode, uh, zinc anode from a uh, swamp cooler. 
And one thing I didn't know is that there's a copper core going down through the center of these anodes. So I broke it into three pieces. And what I plan on doing is melting down the zinc, picking out the copper, and then pouring the zinc off into a pan of water so that we can uh, make some little zinc cornflakes that we can use to add in. When they're small, they're uh, absorbed easily into the uh, mixture. So while we're cooking the zinc, we'll tend to the furnace. And here we're adding our charge to the crucible. This is our flux and the rock and all that good stuff mixed together. And now it's time to lose an eyebrow, light off the furnace. It usually goes off with a pretty good whoosh, and if you have your face over the top, you will lose an eyebrow in front of your hair, mustache, beard, trust me, I know. And we'll let this cook for a while until it's uh, nice and molten go to our next step then and in the meantime we're back to our zinc it's uh, fairly well melted and I can see the uh, copper electrodes down in there so I'm gonna pick those out and there's one still got some zinc on it but who cares And there's the other. Now our zinc is nice and clean of any contaminants. Well, it's time to uh, take our molten zinc and pour it into this pan of water. It'll uh, splash in and spread out and give us a bunch of little cornflake kind of things, which will, of course, mix in better. And there they are. A bit big and chunky, but it's better than just a, a lump. We'll set them on top of the oven here to dry for a bit. Well, time to check on the cookies. I mean the um, beer. No, the material. That's right. I don't know. It looks uh, it's, looks like it's starting to melt. So it's going to take a while longer, but we're heading in the right direction. Now later, when I had checked to see how molten the mixture was, I got a little over ambitious and I uh, dropped the zinc in. When the uh, process called for me first pouring out the material into a conical mold letting it cool, breaking off the slag, and then uh, remelting the zinc and the, uh, the, excuse me, remelting the lead and the silver, then adding the zinc and skimming the dross off the top, which would have the silver and the, the zinc combined together, since zinc has a much higher affinity for silver than lead. So, anyhow, I got everything in there is a big mess so I wound up having to take the mixture of slag zinc and silver and reprocess that to get the silver out of it so here I am pouring it out into the cone shaped mold realizing that I'd done it wrong and trying to figure out what I was going to do next. So 
So here's the chunk of lead that we got out. Now that I've already mixed the zinc in, the silver should be in with the uh, slag. But, uh, this is a decent chunk of lead. It's got some slag in it, but uh, you know, a second melt, that'll clean up. So here's some of our slag that has our silver trapped in it. The silver, zinc, and slag mix. As you see, it's, it's hard. It's like petrified dinosaur poop. So we'll have to regrind that and run it across the shaker table. Grind, 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 shake, shake, shake. Uh, did get a good separation on it though. We then take our high grade, which is the uh, zinc and silver, and cook it at a high enough temperature to burn off the zinc. That should just leave us the silver. And this is what we got. Two nice little pieces of silver. And we're going to put on our gloves and run it through some nitric acid and uh, purify it. See if we can get it up to at least 990 or 999 purity. You got to wear your gloves. If you want to be cool, you got to wear your gloves. That's a small amount of silver, so we don't need a lot of nitric. But we will need to heat it up. Uh, usually I would pour the uh, nitric into the beaker with it in the spill tray just in case I don't know why I put it on the wood countertop if you spill nitric on that you're going to be refinishing your countertop and a little bit more for good luck See, it's already starting to turn brown or turn colors. It's, the nitric acid will put the uh, silver into solution. So you'll just, you'll have a straight liquid except for any contaminants that were already in there. The contaminants hopefully will stay as a solid. We'll then run it through a filter and pull out any of the, uh, the hard contaminants that are left. Here you can see the little bubbles on the uh, pieces of silver as they dissolve and go into solution. And here the small piece is just about gone. Now eventually this will uh, get to the point where it will start giving off a brown gas. That you do not want to inhale. That's uh, oxide of nitrogen that's uh, poisonous. There's your brown gas. Ooh, get a whiff of that. If you're going to be uh, doing anything with nitric acid, do it in a fume hood. If you don't know what a fume hood is, stay away from nitric acid. We even have a blast shield here just in case something pops that uh, doesn't throw nitric all over the place. This stuff is putting out more noxious gas than my cat does. So we're really boiling away at that uh, silver now. The silver is going into solution. Now once it had uh, all dissolved, I let it sit overnight. And the solution actually came out clear, which uh, startled me. I figured it'd have a color. Thought there was no silver left in it. So we're going to run it through the filter anyway and uh, continue the process just to make sure that we aren't being fooled. This is the way most people fold filters. They uh, take them and pleat them by hand. Kind of time consuming and boring. You get the pleats wrong, uh, it doesn't sit right in the funnel. Um, let me show you a better way of doing this. Take your filter, fold it in half, open it back up, and fold it in half upon itself. That seems pretty simple. 
Don't need a lot of dexterity to do this. But now, you hold the filter in this manner and snap your fingers. Boom. It's all the pleats you could want. Fascinating, isn't it? Okay, enough of the magic trick. Put the filter in the, in the uh, funnel. Put the funnel in our uh, vacuum flask and start adding the uh, the solution that hopefully has some silver in it. Being that this solution is uh, fairly clear and not murky, doesn't have any sediment in it, I really don't think I needed to do this step, but it's a good, uh, good procedure to follow a process through all the way as we saw before. You know, adding the zinc in at the wrong time cost me a couple extra hours. So we flush out the uh, beaker, make sure we get all the solution, since the solution is our silver. We want to make sure we get everything out that we can. This is pretty clean, so I don't have to hook our uh, vacuum hose up to the uh, flask and vacuum it out. I found later that uh, this is not the kind of funnel that you want to use on a vacuum flask because it will tend to suck the uh, filter right down into the uh, flask. Alright, we've rinsed our material through the filter, pouring it back into our beaker. Now our next step is uh, to precipitate the silver out and to do so we need to add copper into the nitric acid thus knocking the uh, silver out of solution precipitating it to the bottom in a white cottage cheese looking stuff so here's our our copper we just drop it in the silver and let it fizz away this will put out nitric acid as, or nitric fumes as well so make sure you put it in the uh, fume hood. You can see immediately the white material caking up on the copper that's in the acid and the uh, sediment that's forming. That's actually silver. So the copper goes into solution, turning the solution that blue color, knocks the uh, silver out of the solution and the silver precipitates down to the bottom of your beaker. We wash off our coils, make sure we retrieve our silver. Now you notice that I'm not wearing gloves, that's because I'm a bonehead. This is nitric acid and it will burn you even though it has uh, been processed with the uh, copper and silver and water added to it, it's still nitric acid. Sometimes I get a little overexcited and I, I want to process and I don't think about the safety. There's our silver. It uh, doesn't really look like silver, but it'll be melted down and once it's melted it'll turn back into a silver metallic form instead of this white mud form. Now here's what I was talking about, putting the uh, putting a vacuum flask on with a, a regular filter, a uh, funnel. Eventually the paper filter will start getting sucked down into the funnel. And if you're not paying attention, it'll actually suck it all the way through that funnel down into the uh, flask. You see I'm grabbing it with tweezers and pulling it back up trying to keep it from going through. Now this here is, is simply the uh, liquid that we decanted off earlier. It's going to have some silver in it, in silver in suspension or uh, you know, just small particles floating around. We don't want to waste any of our material that we are processing so we take special care and filtering and 
handling the material so we get as much as we can. If this were gold, you're working at uh, you know $1,800 an ounce, uh, $50 a gram, so you don't want to lose any. Now there is some uh, sediment down there, so we're going to flush that into the filter. That's going to be our silver also. I'm reaching over there now. I'm flipping the switch that uh, turns on and off the vacuum pump. And I'm wash down the filter. Make sure that we get all the acid out of it that we can. And that should just leave us with our particles of silver. Now the vacuum pump that I'm using um, is a 7 CFM vacuum pump. It's an air conditioning recovery system but that vacuum pump that'll it'll suck the tits off a moose I mean that thing is is pretty powerful so you got to be careful so let's take a look and see what we have all these little black specks on this paper that's silver so we'll save this and process it we're going to use the uh, the proper funnel now. This is a Buchner funnel. Uh, it has a flat bottom in it. The filter papers sit flat in the bottom. There's no way that you're going to suck the filter through there unless you put too much of the vacuum in it. But this is the the funnel that you want to use if you're using a vacuum flask. Here I've put the silver in and put it under vacuum and rinsed it through with water. There's our residual copper nitrate. Now we uh, take our silver out in this little piece of paper. Lay it out nicely and admire it. Okay, now we Fold it up, and be careful folding it up, you don't want to dump it all over the place. Fold up all the edges and make a little ball uh, out of it. That is what we'll be putting into our uh, melt crucible to uh, melt it back down into metallic silver. And we'll do the same thing with our particle particles of silver, there's little bits that we filtered out. Since there's a lot of excess filter here that is clean, I'm just going to cut it off so we don't have to uh, ash so much material just to get the silver back out. See, now you know why I wasn't a seamstress. And there's our silver in fine form. We'll fold it up and make a little ball out of it too. All right, last time to the furnace. Going to use a new melt dish that's been uh, treated with borax, so our metals don't stick to it. We'll put our paper pieces in with our silver. And we'll set it to cook. First thing it's going to do, it's going to ash off the paper. The paper will totally disappear and won't be a factor in our final uh, outcome. But uh, once the paper ashes off, the silver powder melts and gloms together into a silver pellet. And you might ask what I do with the uh, remnants of my experiments. This is my stock pot. Any waste material 
from silver processing goes in here and uh, will be treated over a long period of time. There's a coil of copper in here which uh, will condense out any silver that's still in solution. Then we will put iron in with the uh, nitric acid to pull out any copper. And then uh, we'll dispose of the uh, solution in a proper hazmat form. Let's check and see what our silver looks like here. And it's hot in there. Well, there's our little bead of silver. All that black stuff around it is uh, borax. Let it cool down a little bit. The thing with borax is you got to get your metal out before the borax um, solidifies. Or it'll just glue your metal to the ceramic. You'll have to heat it up again. So now that we got our silver out, it's kind of dirty. So we're going to use uh, some muriatic acid to clean the silver. So put a little bit of muriatic acid into the beaker, put our silver into the beaker, and cook it for a while on our hot plate. Uh, just for giggles we'll put in a, uh, a stir bar also. Now, it'd be nice if they made like a stir bar with a chisel head on it so as it spun around it would uh, chisel the uh, crud off of your metal that you're trying to clean. Now, maybe that's not a good idea. But anyhow, there's our merry-go-round of silver. So the little stir bars in there, keeping the solution flowing, kind of beat, beating the stuff off the uh, silver as well. And there's our finished product. Nice shiny piece of silver. Give it away, see what we get. I bet there's at least three or four pounds there. Six point two six grams. Well, nothing to write home about, but uh, still better than nothing. I mean, heck, we started with a rock. We crushed it, tabled it, cooked it, screwed it up, cooked it some more, did some chemical treatment on it. I mean, we went through the works. But here's our silver. Alright, thank you Xavier for uh, the opportunity for making some silver.